In this video, we're going to complete our proof of the central limit theorem using our sort of standardized sample mean, which we found in the last video. And we sort of found our standardized sample mean as being a sum of sort of independent y's, where each of these y's has a mean of zero and a variance of one. And that's important because we've already found the characteristic function for a random variable which has a mean of zero and a variance of one. Okay, so we can use that in order to find the characteristic function of Zn. And we're going to find the characteristic function again in terms of this parameter t. It turns out that a property of characteristic functions is that if my random variables are independent of one another, and if I sum together those random variables, then it turns out that the characteristic function of the overall sum is defined as the product of each of the individual terms. So it's the product of the characteristic function of each, in, each variable y, but we need to reparameterize because of the fact we've got this root 10 at the bottom here. So we just reparameterize in terms of t over root n. And we have this whole thing to the power n because it's sort of a product of n of these individual y's. And we've already found out the characteristic function for each of these random variable y's. So let's sort of write it out in terms of that. We know that that's equal to one minus t squared plus a term which is of order t squared. And then we're gonna have that all to the power n. And notice that I've left sort of a gap at the bottom here. And that's because of the fact we have this root n here, which is sort of here. So we need to actually amend our sort of definition of the characteristic function to include or to take into account this factor. So here actually should be a t squared over two. We're gonna have a t squared over two n because when you sort of square root n, you get just an n. And then this final term is gonna be of order t squared over n. And notice that as n tends to infinity, this sort of last term tends to zero because it tends to zero faster than this sort of second term here. That's the sort of definition of this order term here. And as it turns out that as, let's say, n tends to infinity, we can sort of find the limit of this sort of term here as being the limit of the characteristic function of Zn in terms of t. And that's just equal to this whole sort of term here to the power n. But it turns out that this whole term to the power n in the limit that n tends to infinity is actually defined as the, exp the exponent of e to the minus t squared over two. Well, okay, that's great. We found the sort of limiting characteristic function of our sort of standardized sample mean, but what does this actually mean for us? Well, the idea is that, which we spoke about before, that there is a one-to-one -one mapping between characteristic functions and random variables. In other words, if I find the characteristic function for a particular random variable, then it turns out that there are no other random variables which could produce that particular characteristic function. So if I find that a variable has a characteristic function, I know that it must define one and one only type of random variable. And as it turns out that this characteristic function here is actually that of a, which we would obtain from a sort of normally distributed variable with a mean of zero and a variance of one. So it actually turns out that the limiting distribution of our standardized sample mean is that of a normally distributed variable with a mean of zero and a variance of one. So we know that in the limit that n goes to infinity, so our sample size goes to infinity, our standardized sample mean actually becomes a normally distributed variable with a mean of zero and a variance of one. Okay, so that's our standardized sample mean. How do we then go from that to our actual non-standardized sample mean? Well, it turns out that because my sort of Zn is just equal to, well, if we sort of write it out explicitly, Zn is equal to sort of n x bar n minus n mu, all divided by sort of root n sigma, then it turns out through a continuity theorem that the limit as n tends to infinity of the sample mean distribution is actually normally distributed with a mean of mu with a variance of sigma squared over n. And um, the sort of intuition is quite easily for this. We've essentially, to get from here to here, 
we've just added mu on to it. So any sort of limiting distribution is just going to be shifted a little bit to the, to the right if the sample mean is positive. And also we're sort of going to be multiplying this by, we're going to be multiplying it by sigma divided by root n. And it turns out that if you pre-multiply a normal distribution by, by sort of any number, then it actually becomes, the variance becomes that number squared times the original variance. So the, origin, the new variance is sigma squared over n. So it turns out weirdly that independent of what type of random variable I have, then if I take the sample mean, then it actually tends in distribution as the sample size tends to infinity to a normally distributed variable with a mean of mu and a variance of sigma squared over n. And that's a really, really powerful theorem, the central limit theorem, because we haven't assumed anything about the underlying variables, but at the end of the day, we've got a normally distributed variable out at the end when I take the sample mean of those random variables. And it's a really, really important thing in statistics. And we're going to come across it again and again and again. So I encourage you to sort of look over these videos again and make sure that you fully understand the proof of the central limit theorem.